QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Reconciliation Month 1 Overview. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to be on top with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Geek Drink Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left. We're in the favorites, right-clicking on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab, right-clicking the profit and loss, opening the link in the new tab, and with the trial balance, same thing for the trusty TB tab, and to the right, closing that hamburger, and we will change the range, going from 010124 tab, 022924, making it month by month broken out, and running the report. Tabbing to the right, closing the hamburger, and the changing of the ranging will happen again in 010124 tab, 022924, and then we're going to say that we want this on a month-by-month -month breakout, refresh, and then tab to the right one more time, ham boogie, close, and change that range, 010124 tab, 022924 tab, and then months, run it. Okay, let's go back to the balance sheet. Last time we gave an overview of the importance. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com of the bank reconciliation process, something that every business should do, large, small, whether you have bank feeds or do not have bank feeds, you should be doing part of the bank reconciliation or doing reconciliations, it being the second biggest internal control allowing us some assurity that the financial statements are reported correctly, second only to the double entry accounting system itself that we're forced to use when using the QuickBooks accounting software. So now we want to think about the, pro the process of doing the bank reconciliations, starting with the first month of reconciliations, oftentimes having more difficulties than following months. That's why we're going to do two months of bank reconciliation. We'll talk about some of the difficulties that often come up with the first month of bank reconciliations. And then in the second month, we'll have a process which will hopefully be a little bit easier representing the normal process than going forward from that time. So uh, we, we note that the reconciliation is basically going to be tying out matching what's on our books. We're looking at the cutoff date now at the end of January, the first month, which our books say is 88, 8, 10, 27. And we're comparing that to what's on the bank side of things. And this is our mock bank reconciliation, which typically has the beginning balances, the additions, subtractions, and then the ending balance. The bank says that we have 61,241,85 as of that same point in time, the end of January. It's not the same number you may, may have noticed. Now, that will often be the case. If we have a full service accounting system, in which case we're putting our books in the system on our side, not relying completely on the bank to do so, and then using the bank to double check, possibly with the help and the use of the bank feeds. If we're building our books directly from the bank feeds, then it may well be the case that our balance ties at any given time it's to what is on the bank side of things, but you can only do that in certain cases. So, and even then you'd still want to do the reconciliation. It would just be really easy uh, in that case. So, uh, so we're going to say, well, what is the difference between the two? We saw that they're, they're hopefully going to be outstanding checks and deposits or things that we have to basically record on our side. So in other words, we're going to tick and tie everything from the bank to our side. If something's on the bank statement, but not on our books, 
then the bank's probably correct, usually is, unless the bank made an error, in which case we'll have to deal with that. But usually the bank is correct. We're going to have to add that to our side. If something is on our side, but not on the books side of things, then it might be fine because it might be the case that those are outstanding checks and uh, outstanding deposits, which are the reconciling things, the difference between the bank balance and the book balance. Where we run into a problem with the first reconciliation is often this beginning balance. So we have to have a cleared beginning balance that is the same so that we can tick everything off as we go. And if I go over to our books over here, you will recall that we started entering our data as of the end of 2023, December 2023. So if I go into this checking account, for example, and I was to go into this as of uh, 12, 31, 2, 4, 12, 31, 2, 3, I should say. And then, and then look at this. We put the beginning balance on the books at $25,000. We had to do that because when we entered our beginning balances were imagined from the prior accounting system, that was on our financial statement as of this point in time. So we had to put it on the books at 25,000 because we had to reconcile uh, uh, our debits equaling our credits when we put the beginning balances in place. But the bank says that the beginning balance is $30,000. So that's gonna cause a problem with our bank reconciliation possibly because we don't have a starting point that is the same. So in other words, if I go back on over here, let's check that out from a bank rec standpoint, go into the first tab and we go into the uh, we could go into the uh, transactions and then here's our bank transactions. This is where the bank feeds would flow through. Bank feeds, as we'll look at in future uh, course or section, could help us with the, with the reconciliation, but that isn't the actual reconciliation. The reconciliation is over here in this tab and it says match the books to the bank uh, records connect accounts uh, are easier to reconcile so it's obviously advertising the connection to the bank uh, keep yourself on track find holes in your accounting get things tidy for tax time so let's go ahead and get started so it says reconcile like a pro get your books and your bank statement to agree so you open the bank statement match your books to the statement success all right let's get it done so this was where we would choose the account. We're gonna be choosing the checking account. Now here's the problem. The beginning balance here doesn't even have anything in it. It's at zero at this point in time. Uh, whereas over here, we have a beginning balance of the 30,000. That's gonna cause us a problem. We can kind of work around that though. So let's continue with that and say, okay, I'm just gonna deal with that. Hold on a second. The ending balance is 6124185. So 61241.85, and by the way, 61281, if you mess this up, you can still change it afterwards uh, once you're in there. If I go into this, this is gonna be as of the cutoff date, which is on the bank statement, 131. So as of the ending date of the bank statement here, and then we're gonna say down here, enter the service charges or interest earned. This is kind of a remnant of the old uh, bank reconciliation before bank feeds, because oftentimes what would happen is if we did a full service accounting system, we would be entering oftentimes checks, uh, right? And we would be writing the checks and entering the checks as we go. And there would be certain things that we know that we would not have picked up that would be on the bank statement. And those things would include things like the uh, service charges. The bank's gonna just take money out of our account for their fees. We wouldn't know about that until we got the bank statement. So we could do the journal entry automatically right here and it'll do a journal entry for us to record the fees. Uh, the same might be with interest earned. If we earned interest on our account, then we wouldn't know about that until they told us that on the bank statement. So we could record that as we go. However, these days we actually have bank feeds so so those are things that might come through with the bank feed so we would catch them as they come through our system just like any other transaction and probably record them with the bank feeds making this whole little thing down here obsolete i never liked to use it in the first place because i would rather you know reconcile what i have i think it gets a little confusing 
when we were adding these. So basically I would disregard for those two reasons, this bottom bit here usually. Start reconciling. All right, then we have our little worksheet up top. So we've got the statement ending balance. The statement ending balance is what we typed in here. That was the 61, 241, 85. We just, we just told QuickBooks that. And then we have the cleared balance. The cleared balance is zero at this point in time because it didn't give us any beginning balance and because we haven't checked anything off down below, therefore we have a difference of 61, 241, 85. Our goal of the bank reconciliation is to get this difference down to zero. When the difference is at zero, then we can reconcile. The fact that this difference is at zero or when it gets to zero does not mean that our books will then match the bank books. It does not mean that our books here, this 88, 810, will then be 61, 241, 85, what's on the bank statement, because uh, the cleared balance only represents those items that we checked off down here. And if we didn't check it off, then it might still be a good, a fair thing that we don't check off, right? Because it might be an outstanding check or deposit, which would be the reconciling item. So this is just the cleared balance, the beginning balance, plus the things that we checked off. The things that we don't check off are the reconciling items, the difference between the bank and the book things that will most likely be outstanding checks, outstanding deposits. Now, how do we get to this cleared balance? Well, it's got your little arrows down here. It's the beginning balance, which that's going to be a problem because I don't have anything and it has 30,000. So we're, that's a problem. And then we have the, the payments and the deposits, which are the things that we're going to check off, right? So the deposits would increase this number. The payments are going to, are going to increase this number and so on. So, if I check all of these, these boxes off and I tick and tie each of these items out perfectly, then my ending balance has to work, meaning my additions and my subtractions that are the cleared balances will tie out to this and this exactly. And, and so it has to work, right? If there's something that are in the bank statement that's not on our books, then we're going to have to add it to our books unless the bank is wrong, right? But we can't do it th in the first month because this 30,000 isn't in the beginning balances. So even if I get this number and this number to be correct, it's still gonna be a problem because I don't have the beginning balance. Well, what do I do about that? Well, this 25,000 you will recall is the 25,000 that we put into opening balances. That's the beginning balance that we put into the system. So that is really truly our beginning balance, which should be over here in the beginning balance section. But the fact that it's not isn't a big deal as long as we note it on the first bank reconciliation. We could just check it off and there it is right there. So, so now basically by doing that, I can say, okay, I have this one. I have the top bit, but it doesn't tie out, right? If it matched, I wouldn't have a problem. If this was 25,000, then I would have the 25,000 right here. Even though it's not in the beginning balance, it's in the wrong category. It's still going to be an increase either way and I could still reconcile. It's just that I'll end up with, with the, the increases being these additions plus the 25,000. So why is it off by 5,000 though? What happened there? Well, if in the prior accounting system, I was using a full term accounting system as of the cutoff date of the prior period, which would have been, if I go into the checking account, 1231 of the prior period, this beginning balance, uh, went in there on, uh, let's make the date, uh, 12, 31, two, three, two. Okay. So this 25,000 was in our prior accounting system as of the cutoff date. If we had a bank statement as of 12, 31, 23, then the ending balance on that bank statement, we would presume would be 30,000, the beginning balance on our current bank statement. And that didn't match what's in our books, which is quite natural if we're using a normal accounting process because there were outstanding checks and deposits. So, so now we have these outstanding checks and deposits from the prior accounting system that are messing up our beginning balance that we're trying to start from, from one point, January 1st of 2024. So what do we do about that? Well, one thing you can do is if those amounts cleared, you'll actually see them 
and the current time period, meaning if there was 5,000 in checks that didn't clear last time, they're going to clear in the current month, possibly, right? or else they can remain outstanding. So for example, these two, you can see these two amounts right here add up to 5,000. That's the difference. So what's going to happen is these two amounts are actually not in the current activity. I'm not going to find them in the activity and be able to check them off on the payments because I didn't enter them in the current month. They were entered in the prior month prior to when we started QuickBooks Online in the prior accounting system. So, so there's a couple ways we can fix that then. I could, I could just not check them off, right? I could say, okay, well, if I don't check that off and I just keep this at 25,000, those two amounts will net out, right? So the, the, if I, because this is 30,000 and then there's 5,000 difference down here. So if I put it on the books at 25,000 and I don't check these off, then I'll, I will be able to reconcile exactly. That's one method. It's not perfect, however, because that means your reconciliation is kind of a is kind of messy because you don't get to see that these checks cleared. What we would like to see is that these checks cleared from the prior accounting system and they cleared in the current period. So what we should do is actually enter these checks into the system as of the prior period, uh, prior to our cutoff date, and whenever the checks were entered or possibly we enter them as 1231. And then, and then we'll be able to check them off as cleared. And we change the beginning balance up top to what it should be 25 to 30,000. In other words, we change this number to 30,000 or we make another journal entry for 5,000 so I can check them both off to get to 30,000 as our beginning balance. And then we, we write the cleared, we, we put in, in place the checks, the two checks that were written in the prior period that brought our balance down to 25,000. And then we, we check them off in the current time period. So that's kind of the issue. That's what we'll have to deal with with the first bank reconciliation. Now note the first easy method that we talked about is like, well, I just won't check these off and then I'll just check off the 25,000 and it'll work. That will only work if these two amounts cleared in the current time period. It may well be the case that you have a bunch of checks that will never clear because they, they, they're, there's something a problem there. They're outstanding checks that got entered twice or something and they've been outstanding forever. So if they don't clear, then, then that method's not gonna work. You're gonna have to do something else to fix it, right? You're gonna have to basically enter those checks into the system and then void them properly so that you don't mess up the prior uh, period balances, right? You don't mess up retained earnings. So, so just keep that in mind, like, like you, you, a lot of times what will happen is people will have this problem and then they're like, oh, well, I magically can reconcile it, tied itself out that, but that would only happen if these two actually cleared in the current period. If they don't clear, you're going to still end up, you're going to still end up with a problem. Okay. So once that happens though, once we take care of that beginning balance problem, then the following period will be really easy because this 61, 241, 85 will then be the cleared balance. And in the following period, then that's going to be the beginning balance, which has to tie out because we tied out exactly to the ending balance last time. And then we can just take everything off and everything should work properly and it should be easy to reconcile. Uh, just remember that when we reconcile that this bit here is the process of reconciling getting this down to zero uh, allows us to generate the reports, which are the bank reconciliation showing a report that will give us the bank balance as of a point in time. And then the exact difference of the outstanding checks and deposits to get to reconcile to the book balance. All right. So that's the general, uh, the general issue that we'll have to deal with. So we're, we'll start to do the bank reconciliation next time by just going in and ticking and tying off the deposits and then we'll do the checks and then we'll see that we'll have to add a few items and then we'll deal with that beginning balance issue.